Hi, this is Peter Taiti and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 91 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating treatment of a left main trifurcation lesion. The patient was a late octogenarian who presented with unstable angina. Diagnostic angiography demonstrated significant uh, distal left main disease with um, a lesion in the distal left main. There was also disease in the origin of the LAD, disease in the origin of a large ramus branch. And there was some disease, although it seemed to be moderate, into the circumflex, which however also had a significant lesion. The patient did have a predicted mortality of 9.25% and after discussion with the heart team, a decision was made to proceed with percutaneous coronary interventions. In terms of classification, if we had a Medina system for trifurcations, it would be a 1 for the proximal main vessel, 1 because of disease in the proximal LAD, 1 because of disease in the proximal ramus, and zero because of lack of significant disease in the proximal circumflex. And this is another view, demonstrating that there is actually disease in the ramus protruding a little further down. Again, no significant disease into the proximal circumflex. And there is disease in the ostium of the LAD. So following the steps of PCI one by one is critical for complex cases such as this one. Planning is critical and uh, all these steps being discussed before the case is very important. Cases like this with left main uh, require careful monitoring because hemodynamic compromise can occur. In terms of pharmacology, the patient needs to be pre-treated with a P2Y12 inhibitor and indeed she received uh, 600 milligrams of clopidogrel the day prior. The fourth in terms of access, Cases that are highly complex, like this one, at least in my opinion, are best done with uh, femoral access, especially because here we would likely need eight friends for doing uh, complex trifurcation setting strategies. In terms of engagement, EBU guide, eight friends, and geography in various projections is very important to delineate the lesion, but also the result. The target lesions here are first the distal circumflex before tackling the left main trifurcation. In terms of wiring, in trifurcation lesions, similar to bifurcations with an important side branch, wiring all three branches is very important. Lesion preparation is critical before standing, especially in older patients, to ensure good expansion. In terms of standing, we'll discuss the technique before, but there is much less uh, standardization of standing techniques for trifurcation compared with bifurcation. In terms of physiology, can be used to determine the final result, and imaging is mandatory in cases like this. And then in terms of hemodynamic support, this is a patient who actually had a wedge of 25, and then uh, had a high-risk PCI, given that the PCI of the distal left main trifurcation. And therefore, we decided to use support, and Impella is the preferred device for such cases, unless there's a contraindication, such as left ventricular thrombus, mechanical aortic valve, severe aortic regurgitation of VST. So in this patient, there wasn't one, the femoral axis was adequate, and therefore an Impella CP was used. Another key factor regarding standing here is uh, being knowledgeable of the post-dilation limits of the tragaluting stents. We did IVUS and the left main was 5.0, the RAMUS was 2.75 and the LED was 2.5. So even if we go at a 3.0 stand, the highest uh, or the largest balloon to post-dilate it is up to 3.5, actually with the synergies 4.25. So it would not be large enough to become a 5.0, which is the proximal left main, which create issues had we wanted to use a crossover strategy with the stent coming to the ramus and back into the left main. So we knew here that we could not do a crossover without compromising the integrity of the stents. So how to approach this? We have the impella in. We do have the left main engaged with an eight French guide. Intercoagulation with heparin. Every branch was wired with workhorse wires. 
And once again here, the goal was to treat first the more distal circumflex lesion before tackling the trifurcation to avoid issues with delivery after we had uh, performed stenting here. So this was done with a drug eluting stent. One key factor when multiple wires are used is to be careful how to position them. My personal preference is to use towels to separate them. This is for two wires. In our case, there's an extra layer with a second towel and another wire on top. And the way to position wires varies, but my personal preference is to have the wire that is on top. For example, the lady here would be at the very top. Then the second would be the ramus. Then under the second towel, it would be the wire going to the circumflex. So the same sequence on the towels as it is on the angiogram. This way that minimizes confusion when various equipment is going in. So the circumflex was predilated and stented. And then we wanted to prepare the lesion and we did this by using a tracing or triple kissing balloon predilation. The balloons uh, seem to expand well in both the lady as well as the ramus. And here is the result uh, afterwards. And now we are ready for stenting. In terms of standing strategy, as we discussed before, having a crossover stand coming from the ramus all the way into the left main would not be a good idea because uh, it would be too small to be expanded to 5.0. At the same time, if we put stands here in a V fashion, if a dissection were to happen here, it would be very hard to stand having two stand barrels inside the lumen. So to, to, to overcome this, we decided to use a modified uh, V standing technique in which we first placed the stand in the left main and then placed two stands, one in the LAD and one into the ramus. This way, should a problem occur into the left main, the left main would be covered by a direct looting stand. We wouldn't have issues with um, coverage of the left main lesion. So the left main stand was deployed proximal to the trifurcation. Things looked good. And then we inserted two drag eluting stents, uh, one to five uh, into, the LA, into the LAD, and then a 275 uh, going into the ramus. They were deployed, the balloons pulled back and uh, post dilated at higher pressures. And this was the immediate result. There seems to be maybe some compression of the ostium of the circumflex. However, we did uh, FFR here and it was 0 0.91, therefore the circumflex was not uh, too bad. And then uh, we inserted a balloon for doing pot in the uh, left main, which um, was performed. And uh, this is how it looks. I do not have the IVUS images. However, there was good coverage of the ostia and good expansion of the stand into the left main. So in summary, what we did here is uh, wire all three vessels, did uh, balloon predilatation in all three vessels, and the reason for doing a triple balloon inflation is to minimize plug shift in the circumflex, which did not get stented in our case. Then we did stand the main vessel. And then we did V stenting with the stand into the lady and the ramus, followed by a pot in the main vessel, the left main. And this was the final result. Uh, the patient actually had an uneventful post-procedural course and um, did well uh, in the following month. So in summary, for cases of left main trifurcation, careful planning is critical in all 14 steps of PCI. Here, hemodynamic support um, was useful given the elevated wedge pressure. And for treating the trifurcation, after having three wires in and predilating the vessels, using this modification with a stent into the main and then two stents in a V fashion in the lady and the ramus provided a nice result. Finally, using physiology, to assess uh, any hemodynamic significance into the jailed vessel, essentially, which is the circumflex here, was useful by excluding any significant hemodynamic compromise. Thank you.